FlossTube. My name is Becca and I'm Sambri Stitches here on FlossTube and Instagram. And this is another special edition of Interview with a FlossTuber. I am very, very excited today to be here with Carol. She is the salt box stitcher. Really doesn't need much of an introduction, I'm sure. Um, but what I can say is that her videos are filled with absolutely beautiful, beautiful stitching. A lot of samplers, as you can see from behind her. Um, with quilting and a lot of enabling. She's always showing patterns <laughs> and kitting them up. Um, so there's a lot of enabling going on. Um, and I'm sure I'm not alone in wishing that we could have like a personal walkthrough tour of her home and just be in heaven with all the samplers and the quilts that are um, displayed throughout it. So I'm very excited to sit here and chat with you. So how are you doing today? I'm good. Hi, Becca. And thank you for having me. I've watched some of your other interviews with floss tube and you're just a natural you make oh thank you <laughs> at ease and re you know reveal all their secrets <laughs> <laughs> well let's see what kind of secrets we can reveal from you today <laughs> okay. but thank you I really appreciate it oh I'm very excited um to do this so how about we jump into the questions sure um the first one is why did you start a floss tube and were there any particular motivations well, it's kind of a story that's kind of funny because I had been watching some floss tube. I think I started watching Vanna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, yep. both her floss tubes and her um, great tutorials. And so I was telling my husband about it and I said, you know, it's like, he's like, well, what is floss tube? And I said, well, I think it's just kind of a name that people have kind of garnered, but it really is just YouTube, you know, but it's people that talk about their stitching. And, he said, well, why don't you do it? And I said, oh, I don't know. I was just kind of leery of putting myself out there. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of a private person, even though I ramble on and on. But um, I just didn't know if I wanted myself out on the World Wide Web. Yeah. Don't so yeah. one day I was um, gone all day. I got together with some other stitching friends. And when I came home, he said, well, I started a floss tube for you. <laughs> what and he said well it's just some pictures that i took around the house and he said i even named it for you well the name is there was a shop when we lived in kansas city that was called the salt box sampler and that is where alma from blackbird worked way okay. before her and barb got together and i used to shop at that store and i loved it and actually i think her and barb met through that um an introduction wow Barb took a quilting class from Alma, et cetera. If you ever go to a retreat, they'll explain all that. Well, later it closed and I just always had a soft spot in my heart for that salt box name. So when I started my long arm quilting business, I named it salt box quilting. Well, then he, he just named me salt box sampler. And I said, <laughs> actually that's perfect. So that's where the name came in. And that's when I started doing floss tube. So if you go oh. back to my very, very, not my first video that showed my face, but the very first introductory, it's just some pictures around our house with some music. And, you know, he said, we can delete it if you don't want it, but he was all excited for That's me to so start. Neat. And he's still my biggest cheerleader. He gets everything set up and, you know, sometimes it gets contentious because I'll be like, well, I don't think the lighting's that good. And he's like, yeah, it's perfect. So, <laughs> But it's, it's all good because he does so much of it for me and I'm very thankful. So that that's is, how I got started. That is amazing to have such a great support system and he just kind of like pushed you into it and <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I don't know of anybody else that has that kind of story. It's like, I no. know a lot of people supported by their husbands or their family, but I was that just- That one that not. started it, yeah. <laughs> So it'll be three years this coming summer. I think I first recorded like May or June. Wow. So it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's crazy. That's so neat though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a very appreciative. Yeah. All right. Um, so this is a subscriber question and they were just wondering if you have a blog. I don't. And I never did. I, um, I used to, you know, read different people's blogs, um, some quilting blogs, some rug cooking blogs, but I just never jumped in with a blog myself. Um, I guess it was all part of that techie thing that I just wasn't really, you know, I was working at a quilt shop and my days were full with making samples oh, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I did not. 
and I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is kind of close enough to, a, you know, a blog, this and Instagram. So yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, this is kind of a fun one. We'll get to learn a little bit more about you. It's how did you learn to stitch and how long have you been stitching? Okay, so let me answer the second part first. I, um, my mom let me start sti- sewing on the sewing machine when I was five. Wow. She had a knee pedal on her sewing machine. So even though my feet didn't touch the floor, I was able to piece quilt squares together. And that just launched me. I was really into sewing and I made my own clothes for a long time. I made um, wedding dresses. I made bridesmaids. I made, you know, the gamut, the gamut. So then I did various different, like I did some needlepoint. I did um, some cruel embroidery, but I really got started stitching in... It was either 80 or 81. So that's been what, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I had bought my own house. I was divorced, but working and I bought my own house. And there were these parties that people would have like, I guess I can say the word Tupperware (laughs) because they were like, you know, those kind of parties and you'd invite people to your house and then you'd have a representative come and they would tell you about their company. Well, it was all about stitching and there was needlepoint kits <laughs> it was called creative circle there was needlepoint kits there were um cruel kits and there were cross stitch kits so the first thing she did and i i don't remember her name specifically but she gave us all this piece of oops this little piece of clostern oh and she my God. taught us all to make a heart and i still have it that is so cool time. it was in my printer's box for a long time with other miniature stuff but it had back stitching and crosses, and I think it's like seven count closter. Wow. I was hooked. <laughs> I bought a bunch of ornament kits. I still have some of the ornaments, although some of them had plastic, you know, um, kind of frames around oh, yeah. and they kind of have gotten, so I need to reframe a couple of them, but that was the start of it, so. That is so neat. I didn't know, cause I know there's like, there's always a scrapbooking get togethers and that kind of stuff. I didn't know that there was like a, a stitching kind of, they should home start parties. doing that again. That would be so oh, neat yeah. after COVID of course, but. <laughs> home parties. It was really cool. Wow. And um, I don't know if you follow Daisy K primitives, but come to find out her mother-in-law was one of the representatives. At, oh. in Kansas City. So it's very possible that her mother-in-law was the one that gave the party at my house. That Which is, is so really weird. <laughs> Small world. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, crazy. It was really fun. And then I was just hooked. And so I started, you know, I did a lot of cute little things and ornaments and Christmas yeah. things. And then when my, um, when I was about ready to have my daughter, she was born in 86. So when I was pregnant in 85, I actually took some Prairie School or Noah's Ark pieces I enlarged them and I made a quilt for her oh, wow. with these cross stitch pieces in it I mean now it looks really dated but um oh. yeah I was crazy <laughs> wow that is so <laughs> neat shop, the salt box sampler that I used to go to that was where I first saw my first big sampler and I was like I have to make this and then shortly after then we moved and everything but I just still kept stitching so yeah, I was going to ask you, like, when you really got into samplers, because I know that's, that's the, you know, the big thing that's all over your walls, so. Yeah, my first one is dated 88, 1988, so, oh. um, you know, if it took me a year to do, maybe 87 is when I started, I don't know. I, yeah. I did used to stitch with a hoop, and so I think I was a little bit slower than I am now, mm-hmm. but, um, and I was doing quilting, I was doing smocking when my daughter was, I was doing other stuff, too, so I wasn't just focus yeah on finishing the sampler so anyway. that's so neat that's so, so cool. yeah it was really fun and I I this morning I went looking for this and I was like I hope I can find that because it's so that's fun. so neat so, that you yeah. have it though <laughs> I know. 40 years later I know right wow that's so, neat yeah that's something that's definitely should be cherished you know do you have like a note or something with it to just no, but I, now that I found it I need to Maybe even frame it in a little yeah. frame and put a, something on the back. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, that's a very special piece. Yep. Uh, it's just fun. It's just yeah. fun. That's a neat. little bit of history. <laughs> yep. 
Um, this is one of my favorites because I, I like to see what people, you know, think is their favorite project that you've stitched so far. Oh, my favorite is by far, um, although it's sort of like saying what's your favorite child, you know. Right. <laughs> don't really want to admit it in front of them. Sometimes it's your firstborn. You know? The ones behind you are going to be really sad. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, ladies. But this is Jane Tyndall. Oh, my gosh. And this is one that's by Needlework Press. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see, we can see it. That's it's all. Jane Tyndall. It's a lot first, of grass. <laughs> yeah, a lot of grass. It's the first reproduction sampler that I ever really did. Wow. It's by Needlework Press, but when I was at the attic in 2019, last time we were allowed to travel, um, right. Tanya from the Scarlet House said that she actually charted that. That was the first thing. And yeah. uh, Megan and um, what's her name? From Needlework Press. Anyway, they let her chart it just to see if she would like to chart. And so Tanya from the Scarlet House actually charted it. But that is so cool. It's marketed under Needlework Press. So anyway, yeah, very cool. Ah, well, so that, then apparently she enjoyed charting. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, kidding. I think that's probably my favorite. I have others that are real close seconds, but yeah, I think that's my yeah. favorite. That's such a neat partnership. And that piece is, you, it's gorgeous, but man, that's a lot of filling. <laughs> well, and I think before that is when I hit, well, and I'll talk about stitching, how I stitch, but that was kind of a transition piece where I stitched without a hoop. So. Oh, okay. You kind of switched to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what do you enjoy most about stitching? You know, some people say it's the process. Some people say it's the product. And I really feel like it's just both for me. I really enjoy the methodic rhythm of the stitching. Um, you know, just just a needle in your hand and mm -hmm. just the motion is just, it's really cathartic. And it kind of allows your mind to kind of wander and yep. ponder, you know, at least if you're not counting. <laughs> True. <laughs> Especially when I'm doing big chunks of things like the grass, you know, I can just get an emotion and a rhythm and, you know, my mind is out somewhere else, but it's a good thing. You know, yep. it's kind of a pondering and, and, you know, kind of, um, it's, it's just very quieting to my spirit. So, yep. I, but I also I, like the product once I get them done. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot that aren't framed, but because, you know, it's not cheap to get them professionally framed, but I do really enjoy product obviously they're all over my walls so yeah I, I, I want a house like yours <laughs> well if you could see all the messes you might disagree but <laughs> I just I just finished uh, Huckleberry Farm which is my very first sampler um, cool. and I haven't even gone to price framing yet because I'm so scared <laughs> well and a lot of people frame their own and they just go I've done that too yeah a smaller piece I'll lace it or pin it and then just go to one of the big box stores and, and get a custom frame, but you're going to oh. save a lot versus having, you know, the actual piece done, That's you know, a good point. placed and all that. Hmm. So, you know, they'll measure it for you depending on how much, you know, margin you want of linen showing, and then just order just the frame and then you can pop it in yourself and finish. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Cause most of the places around here are like the big box stores. They're not, you know, custom framing and probably not used to stitching um, to frame. So that's a good idea. Cool. Yeah. I might look into that and save a little bit of money. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. um, so we're going to get out of stitching a little bit and kind of get to know you a little bit more. And just wondering what your favorite genre of book or movie is. Well, um, as far as books go, I've kind of, I used to read quite a bit and I loved historical fiction. And then I went through a period where I really didn't read very much because I would rather be stitching. And so, you know, it's kind of like, sometimes you have to pick one or the other. Right. And then my daughter, a few years back said, mom, you just need to get an Audible app and just download books and listen to them while you're stitching. Which, you know, I thought was genius. Right. <laughs> Like, but at first I thought, well, I don't know if I can stand to listen to somebody read because my husband would say, oh, I'll read you something. I'd be like, 
please don't. <laughs> please stop. <laughs> you know, but you realize when you listen to an audible book is you have somebody that's a narrator that's yeah. made to be a narrator. And so their voice inflections and inflections, whatever that word is, yeah, are different than just somebody listening to, you know, drone on reading an article or something. So anyway, I've really gotten into audible books. I really like Charles Martin, who's he's a local author, but he's done a, quite a few books and they're more I guess kind of adventure. He oh, okay. he does a lot of things here in Florida. They end up kind of being a love story, but like he was one of the ones I read was he was fighting human trafficking. But then in the long run, he the main character falls in love with the girl. So I mean, it's they're just really good. Charles right. Martin, and um, as far as movie, I'm kind of all over the board. Um, I love Star Wars. Love Star Wars. Um, but I also watch a lot of British TV. I'm really into oh, okay. British TV, murder mysteries, all of that kind of thing. So I guess I'm just very, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Eclectic, that works. There you go. <laughs> I was, I, I totally get the whole, you know, reading takes away from the stitching and the, and the quilting and the crafting of any sort. Um, and so throughout these interviews, I've learned about BookTube um which is you know just another version of our floss okay. tube community so i mean there's so many ways that you can still you know listen to stories and stuff like that and stick exactly. so best of yeah. both worlds <laughs> yeah and i enjoy doing that it yeah. i enjoy because i feel like i can concentrate on it while i'm stitching you, you know if you have to pause while you count you know yeah so be it. But, you know it, it works for me it works yeah for me. yeah, yeah. I still have to pause sometimes if I'm watching floss tube just so that I could focus on, you know, counting a certain amount because it's hard to if, listen if and want, count. If you want to count correctly. Correct. Right. <laughs> That's why Zooms being in like Zoom meetups and stuff like that, just you end up frogging more than you end up stitching. <laughs> yeah. It happens when I get together with friends too. You'll be talking and stitching and you get home and you think, that wasn't even the right color <laughs> right <laughs> so you just need fill in projects that's yeah, it just yeah. fill in projects for that kind of stuff but exactly. yeah um so what fictional place would you most like to go to okay you're gonna laugh at this one but um in the star wars movie number four which actually came out very first it's called a new hope okay and luke uh, Skywalker and Obi-Wan go into this bar in Mos Eisley. I don't know if you're familiar with Star Wars. A little bit, but <laughs> it's the craziest bar because there's every kind of creature in there that you can possibly okay. imagine. Yeah, I think I know that scene. Yeah. And I, I was like, I think I could, I would enjoy going there. And actually they have kind of a recreation of it at Disney. Um, really? my daughter, yeah. Cause Disney now owns Star Wars. So um, my daughter said, well, mom, if that's where you want to go, go to Disney. Then just go. <laughs> I'm like, no, I want to go to the real Mos Eisley planet and yeah. go to that bar. Plus, hello, that's where Harrison Ford was. So. Yes. I, I think I do remember that one now. Cause I remember, cause I used to have the characters when I was little. Um, and there was a lot of the characters that were in that bar too. I think those little, yeah. yeah There's those little the Lego sets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'd go there. I think that'd be fun. That's I not know. that's not something to laugh at. There's a lot of Star Wars fans, so yeah. I think it would be yeah. really fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, so if you could choose to do anything for a day, what would it be? <sighs> I I really had an idyllic childhood and I had cousins that grew up on both sides. My dad's two brothers lived on each side of us and I think I would be a child again, playing in the snow. The three houses were on a hill and we had great snow runs and all the neighborhood kids would come out on a you know day off school. And I think with all of the snow that people up in different areas are getting, yeah. it just reminded me of how fun that was as a kid. So yeah, I would do that again for a day. Yeah, I actually, that's funny that you said that because I was talking to my husband. I had this weekend off from work um, and that's when it snowed here and it never snows here. And I had a conversation with him about, you know, how neat it would be to go back and be a kid because our girls are older. So they were like, eh, snow, whatever, you know, 
Um, but our next door neighbors, all their little kids were out, you know, sledding down their, their yard and everything. So that's funny that you mentioned that. Cause I just had a conversation with my husband. <laughs> yeah, it's at like nine, 10, 11 age. That yeah. It's so fun. And you stay out way past when you should have come in because it's yep. so cold and you're wet. And it's just but you're just having too much fun to go inside. Yeah. Yeah. So where are you in Oregon or Washington? Washington. I'm from Oregon, but we're in Washington and we, the, where we are in Washington, we rarely ever get snow. So really? every like two years, we'll get a pretty decent couple of days of snow. Um, that's usually my, son, it. my son-in-law's from Springfield. Oregon. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Eugene Springfield area. So yeah. They so they don't get very much snow. Right. Yeah. They go there about once a year, my daughter and her husband and the kids. And she said they rarely get snow there either. So. Yeah. Yeah. But when it does snow, it's so nice, but nobody knows how to drive in it. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we lived in Michigan and Connecticut. My husband's from Michigan. So like, you know, we know how to drive in the snow. We've lived right. there. But the people that are, are native to this area, we just stay off the roads. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I went to school in Iowa, so I understand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so we kind of know the answer to this already, but do you have any other hobbies besides cross-stitch? <laughs> I do. I quilt um, a lot. I worked at two different quilt shops here in Jacksonville, and I actually worked at one in Kansas City before we moved. And um, those were part-time jobs. And I got to on the second quilt shop where I did a lot of teaching. So I would make a lot of quilts just for samples for the store. And, you know, so I, I have more quilts. And I try to do giveaways on my channel occasionally. I've like if that. I hit a thousand subscriber milestone, I'm, I'm behind. I need to give away a couple. But I have so many. And many of the colors are ones that were brighter that I don't necessarily have in my home, but they mm -hmm. were ones that people would buy the fabric at the store. And so I would make them out of the brighter. So there's a lot of them that um, I just have more than I need. And so I don't do as much as I used to with quilting, but I'm still, I still have my hand in it. I still have a lot of fabric. I like rug hooking, um, wool applique, um, really it's, it's all about the needle and thread. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm pretty tunnel vision on that. So. Yeah. It's so generous um, with you doing the giveaways for the quilts. I, I've, I've seen that. Um, that is my dream someday is to learn to quilt. Uh, my sewing machine and I are not friends. I think I've used it four or five times in the past. I don't even know how long I've had a year or two years. Um, but a, a friend and a subscriber who lives in Ireland has sent me a couple of packages filled with, you know, smaller quilts that she has made and, and, and uh, what's that paper piecing, stuff like that. And I was in tears because Aww. I couldn't yeah. believe that, you know, I have it, I have one up on my wall right over there. Um, it, quilts are just amazing. There's so much work and love and time that goes into them. And I want to fill my house with them. So <laughs> someday. <laughs> My husband says they have healing properties because if he doesn't feel well and he'll cover up with a couple quilts, he said, quilts have healing properties. Yeah, because there's so much. That, but sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's so much, there, there's a lot of love and time that go into them. So I could totally see that for sure. Yeah. Um, Very cozy. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So someday, someday for me, but we'll there see. Um, so I love this question. This is how would your friends describe you? You know, that's really kind of a hard one because without <laughs> sounding kind of puffed up, you're like, well, so I was FaceTiming my daughter and my, um, her kids, my five-year-old granddaughter and my seven-year-old grandson were kind of over her shoulder. Mm -hmm. So I said, how, how would you, would you describe your mother? And she was kind of like, oh, is this a true question? <laughs> <laughs> so my granddaughter says, pretty. Oh, <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> I don't think that. And then my grandson said, kind. And I said, oh, that's really sweet. I really think they would say witty or funny or knowledgeable because not that I think I'm knowledgeable, 
but I have a lot of my friends and most of my friends are either stitching or quilting friends. And I seem to be the one, maybe because I used to teach quilting, that they're like, well, how much backing would I need for this quilt? Or how do you do this kind of stitch? And so obviously they wouldn't ask me if they didn't think I had the answer. So right. those are the two things, I guess. We'll skip the pretty. <laughs> No, go to kind. <laughs> I'm not generous. People think I'm generous, but I'm really not. I'm pretty selfish. <laughs> Very so, out of it on that one. <laughs> I'm pretty selfish. So I guess I would say funny or witty, and um, yeah, I, I think kids kids speak the truth. They really <laughs> no, they really do. They, they do. So you need to take what they said. Um, to heart because they they do speak the truth um, my daughter often than answered. they should but <laughs> my daughter never answered she just said oh. uh, well you heard it mom <laughs> wow I'd have a little bit more of a conversation about that <laughs> oh she knows me I know oh. her That's okay. but you're imparting your wisdom on a lot of people if they're turning to you they they definitely you know they want your knowledge and and your you know and I love to share. I mean, if, if I know something and I can help somebody yeah. with it, I love to share. That's so. neat. That's neat. Yeah. Cause I've asked people, I have a good friend that worked at two different cross stitch stores for a long time and she's my go-to, mm -hmm. you know, if I want, I say, well, what do you think of this kind of linen or, you know, do a floss toss with her. And she's very good at, you know, so I have people I go to, so I'm yep. fine with people asking me and I'll say, I don't know if I don't know. So, so maybe you're a little generous, just a yeah. little bit. <laughs> even though you don't think you are. <laughs> um, so how do you prefer to stitch? I know we kind of alluded to this a little bit, but a hoop, a cue snap in hand, that kind of thing. I have a definite motion that I do with my hand. And um, so I stitch in hand. I don't use a hoop. I don't roll the side. I just kind of scrunch it. And then I just stitch. And actually I watched a Jean Farish um, uh, video one time and she said that that was called it was a name for it I don't know if it was the Victorian stitch or something mm -hmm. like that it was different because on the back my stitches go like this and oh, okay stitches go like this so I I do an x and then I do a long stitch to the next beginning so my stitch is on the back so I'm constantly going doing a loop way. type of, oh that's neat and it's a very natural it's almost like if I could look at somebody and watch them like do a hem on, you know, if you're hemming something or you're just doing a basting stitch and just watch the motion of their hand. When I taught um, hand applique at the store that I worked at, I took a class at market one time from some gals that are gurus in hand applique. And they said different people, depending on what's comfortable, some people will stitch up. So, like I've watched Nicole's needle at work and she kind of stitches up, up and okay, down. Okay, yeah, that motion. People will stitch toward them. So that's a comfortable motion where for me, it's a, it's this right to left motion. Okay. So that's how I stitch because that's how I do anything that's needle and thread, whether I'm just basting, you know, that or whether, motion. whatever mm -hmm. I'm doing, I have to do it that way. If I have to go backwards, it's almost like, it's just not natural. Awkward, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a natural motion. So huh. anyway, I don't think everybody can stitch in hand the way I do, because that may not be what's comfortable for their, for their hand, you know, right. So, anyway, mm -hmm. but I do stitch in hand, except when I do over one, I use a small hoop, and I go in and out for one over one, you know, because yeah. I, you have to have those holes separated a little bit more when you're doing over one. So yeah, for sure. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Now well, on the bigger pieces where I first started doing a lot of grass. Oh yeah. I would do half a stitch because I was using DMC and I would do half a stitch. And then I thought, well, I'm doing half a stitch and going back. And then I would turn my work upside down and go back the other way. And yeah. I thought, why am I doing this? Why don't I just do a full X at a time? And then as I started using um, over dyed cottons and stuff, I found that doing an X at a time was better for the over dyes for the, yeah for the variegation yeah yeah so that's basically how i do it hmm. so and it's very comfortable to me yeah i had to go in and out in and out in and out with a hoop 
or well, just or whatever. it also seems like it would be a little bit faster too than the the whole in and out or whatever the way yeah. that you do it yeah so do you have like a preferred fabric that you lean to you know towards at all you know I think I've kind of and I think a lot of it depends on your eyesight but um for a long time, I stitched almost everything on 30, well, 32, and then I went to 36. And then once I hit 40 count, you know, I was like, yeah, this is my sweet spot is 40 count. Oh, now wow. I've done some 46. I still do a lot of 36. Um, that's just what's comfortable to me. I'm also stitching a piece as a gift that's an old Blackbird kit, and it's on, it's either 28 or 30, and I'm using two strands. And it's it's fine. I mean, I'm comfortable with it. I just prefer using one strand. So the higher counts really. Yeah. Different. I actually just um, did just a little small St. Patrick's piece that was on, I think it's 14 count um, where I was using the two strands because I, I only stitch on Ada, but I usually stitch 18 count Ada with one strand and I did not like how the oh, look yeah. of it was <laughs> yeah I was like I am not a big fan of luckily it's just a small little piece but yeah I can't 18 that's the same as 36 so yeah really, that's the same cover, yeah you know as one strand on 36 so yeah I prefer the one strand for sure yeah yeah I don't know what it is I think it, it also lays better too I think than because it's been a while since I did the two strands and you know, even with railroading, it just yeah. doesn't look right. It drives me crazy. <laughs> well, the other thing with two strands, I always come out with ones longer than the other. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, what the heck? <laughs> I, I don't get how that works. Yes, I don't know. I think it's just, the, I don't know if the needle, it's <laughs> something where they slide. It drives me crazy, but yeah. But I mean, sometimes it can be a, like an inch and a half difference. Yeah. I, I just. And you're like, I don't understand how that happened. <laughs> I really don't. It's magic. It's my pay grade. It's magic. <laughs> yeah, it is magic. Um, so do you have a favorite place that you've traveled and did you bring stitching along when you went? Um, when I was in high school, I went to Europe. So I have a lot of fond memories. I didn't stitch back then. Um, in 2019, I went, I think to four different retreats and they, they were vicariously through you. <laughs> yeah, I broke the bank. Because when you go, you pay for your travel, you pay yep. for the retreat, and then you buy stuff when you're there. <laughs> yep. Plus your hotel and all that. So um, it was very fun. It was when I first met Brenda and Laura and um, just so many different people that I've met. And it was just very fun. And my problem when I travel with stitching is I always take too much. For some reason, I think I'm going to work on like five different products. Right. I, <laughs> I think we all do that. <laughs> But you're at, you're going to a shop where you can buy something if yep. you run out. So it's like, I don't know what the logic is. So. Anyway, yeah. But yeah, I always take stitching if I travel now. But yeah, I take it everywhere too, everywhere. And I hope I had signed up my first retreat ever was going to be the Acorns and Threads oh. uh, Stitch Summit. And of course, you know, it got canceled last year and it w went virtual. And I'm hoping this year that it can be an in-person one because I just want that experience of, of, a retreat <laughs> well and the camaraderie of yeah stitches, and they will know you and it's I mean not that it's necessarily flattering but it's like instant friendships mm. because you know they kind of know you and then you get to know them and it's it's really fun it's yeah really fun. yeah that's I'm hoping 21 I can go to at least one or two this year yeah I'm hoping hoping fingers crossed <laughs> I know fingers crossed knock on wood four leaf clover everything <laughs> Um, so, uh, what can you not do without for your stitching? Like your favorite go-to must have? Well, obviously it'd be needle thread and linen, but yeah. for me, it's my readers because I do use 4.0 readers and that's not something you can usually go to the grocery store or, um, Walgreens or something and pick up a pair of 4.0. They might have 2.25s. Yeah, I think I've seen threes, the highest. I have to have, have, to have my higher, uh, whatever, yeah. higher lens or whatever for my readers. So yeah, now, I, I love you. my Dovo scissors. I love certain needles that I like, but when it comes down to it, I could probably find a place if I was like, say out of town, I could find a place where I could buy some of those supplies, but mm -hmm. 
readers I'd have to have. So yeah, I had to go bifocals in order to be able to even stitch on 18 count now. So I completely understand because if you don't have those glasses, you wouldn't Forget be able it. to stitch. <laughs> and for years I stitched without glasses. Yeah. And, you know, then gradually I was like, oh, I guess maybe I'll get 1.5s and then 2.0s. <laughs> now I'm up to 4.0. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because you yeah. stitch on 40 count, so you definitely need magnification. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so how do you decide on what you're going to work on next for your projects? That's kind of a tough one because um, I love samplers, but sometimes when I power through or monogamous, monog well, you know that word, monogamous. Yeah, I can't even say it. <laughs> monogamously stitch on yeah. one thing. When I finish it, I'm not ready to necessarily jump in to another big one. So I like to either pick up a whip or a small piece. So I kind of alternate. Okay. And I have quite a few whips right now, which is, it's not stressing me, but it bothers me because I want them finished so that yeah. I can start more stuff. Right. <laughs> All that stuff you, you know, have kitted. We have this stash for a reason, you know? Yeah. So anyway, for me, um, I just kind of alternate. I'll, maybe if I did a big sampler, I might do something small or a smaller sampler. And, um, or I'm trying to do whips on weekends so that I can get through some of them. So that's just, that's just how I, but you know, sometimes you don't feel like picking up something brand new. You know, yeah. sometimes you wanna go with something you're a little bit familiar with the symbols or whatever and you can pick up and, and work on, so. Yeah, that makes kind sense. Of varies. It kind of varies. I don't have any logic to say I stitch on this and this. I don't do a, a schedule lot of the, or anything. The wheels yeah. and the I guess I'm too stubborn. You know, it's like I don't I don't want myself telling myself what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. I think I've talked about it in other interviews where that wheel, I don't like the wheel telling me what to do. I always just say nope. Oh, you made up the wheel, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yep, That's not gonna happen. <laughs> but I appreciate people that use them and get a lot of stuff done. Yeah, it's a great it's a great system for a lot of people. So I'm not yeah. I'm not dissing the system, but it's just for me it doesn't. Right, I'm the same way. A lot of people like like the whip goes and the the counting groups and that kind of stuff. It's it's kind of to each their own on on how yeah. it helps them with the progress and everything. The whip go kind of sounds pretty neat. I might try that next year, but yeah. I thought that sounded kind of cool too. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of neat. Um, so we are down to the last question and I say it in every interview, it is my favorite. Um, and it's what's the best thing that has happened to you so far this year? And you can include 2020 since we're only, you know, a couple months okay. in, but yeah. Well, um, I talked about this quite a bit last year in, um, let's see if I can hold my composure. In October of 2019, my daughter at age 33 was diagnosed with colon cancer. Mm -hmm. So um, there was no cancer in our family. I can't say that anymore, but um, it was quite the blow to our family. And she has two small kids. And so anyway, um, she had surgery and then she went through chemotherapy. So March of last year, she is now cancer free. So that that's hands amazing. down by far is the best thing that's happened in the last year. So 2020 and all of its problems, that was a joyous, joyous thing for us. That so. is amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And I remember I had gone back and binge watched um, your channel. Um, and I remember kind of going through all of that. And I think I left a couple of comments um, on it because, you know, I was way back when you're, you know, when it yeah. was current, but um you know, I remember watching all that and then seeing your emotions and. Well, and the stitching community was absolutely unbelievable. I, in one video, I mentioned that she had a GoFundMe, but I, I wasn't soliciting funds. Right. I had people that are stitchers that gave four figures. Wow. GoFundMe. It was my son. I didn't even want to know, but all I know is my son told me these are people in the stitching community because their comment was something about, I watched Carol's videos and all that. Yeah. So it just blew me away. And 
it gave me an even more of a connection, I think, to the stitching community because of what people just rallied around me with good thoughts and prayers and support and it just meant the world to me. So I think I think our community is just amazing. They rally around so many different, you know, different things that it it's just so great to be a part of it. It really is. And I'm glad that they were there for you because I know that 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 was such a scary, scary time for you, I'm sure. And, and we're from so many different walks of life. That's yeah. the amazing thing. You know, there's people all over the world that watch these floss tube. And it's, you know, there's people that don't even speak English that mm -hmm. are watching floss tube. And I just can't get a grip on that. On my yeah. head just is like, you know, because that's I'm amazing right with you. that it's a global thing, you know, the floss tube and you know, from all different walks of life, mm -hmm. you know, whether you're old, whether you're young, you know, people that have young children, people that are grandmas. I mean, you name it. I know. I love it. I love it so much. It's phenomenal. It is a phenomenon. And now, be and because of COVID, not saying that it was great in any way, but because of COVID happening and because of, you know, all the lockdowns and, and everything that we've been in, people were turning to, to technology like this, like Zoom, um, you know, FaceTime, all those different things to connect because yeah. they couldn't meet in person. Yeah. And for the Zoom meetups, you know, that I host, I've met people from all over the world that joined that I've become friends with just because we couldn't meet our people in our areas, you know, right. so we, it, it's amazing, the technology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like pen pals, but it's video and right? it's, <laughs> you have the same interests and all of yeah. that. So yeah. That's great. It's yeah. great. We're very, very blessed to have such a great community yeah. for I hope it continues. people. Yeah. I hope it continues because yeah. that it needs to. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I would hope it continues even after, you know, things kind of get back to a new normal because otherwise you'd lose your connections with the people that aren't close by you. So exactly. Um, exactly. I know I'm going to continue my my meetups because I don't want to lose touch with any of the people that I've become friends with. It's It's just been so amazing to get through that um most people that time. you meet if you do get to go to a retreat new friends right you can continue to connect with through yep. floss tube or through the community through any kind of yep. you know zoom facetime whatever you can do to meet yeah so, yeah absolutely okay. amazing absolutely amazing but I'm, I'm glad that that was that was an amazing highlight for you for the year so such great that news and a blessing a huge yeah. blessing huge blessing is so. right um, but thank you. We are at the end of the interview. Thank I was you. so excited when you said yes to do this because like I said, I binge watched your channel a, a while ago, but I keep up to date on your videos. You are very enabling, by the way. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I know, right? Be proud. Be proud. <laughs> but, I earned it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I really do enjoy your videos. I just have to sit there with like a little notepad or something because you're like, I have this kitted. I have this kitted. Thank you. <laughs> but, but thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, to do this interview. It's been so much fun and we've it learned a lot more about it. I'm nervous, you. but it turned out fine. So. So I, I'm glad. I, I think it did go very well. So. <laughs> put people at ease so that's yeah. great oh yeah. thank you thank you so we'll say bye to everybody on floss tube bye, bye everybody